What a better way to mark Memorial Day than focused on our freedoms, freedom of speech, freedom of and from religion, etc., and how those rights are being debated in real time right here. Case in point, this week in South Florida, the news that one Miami-Dade parent had requested to have removed from her children's school library this. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade. The loss we carry a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is isn't always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We the reaction on social media of inaugural poet laureate Amanda Gorman, who considered her poem, she called it banned and then used that word, brought nationwide attention to Miami-Dade schools and a rare public reaction from the school district clarifying that it was not banned. Florida's new expanded rights and education law and the law called individual freedoms that puts parameters on how history is taught has become one of the most politically charged changes in Florida education. Miami-Dade School Board member Robert Alonzo is live with us today. School Board is a nonpartisan entity currently, and we like to look at things here from a partisan-free lens, and so it is great to have you, Roberto, aboard for the program today. Thank you so much for having me this morning, Glenn. Always a pleasure. So let's talk a little broad as we go on. But right now, I want to start with this specific news of the week and the fact that Miami-Dade responded to a challenge by a parent for this specific poem, this specific book, by actually moving it from elementary school to middle school. And it was an age-appropriate issue that was looked at. So fill in the details there for me a little bit. Definitely, yes, uh, Glenna. So we have a policy that was actually put in place back in May of 2011, where all parents have the ability to put in concerns regarding any material used within our schools. This particular parent had a concern about five books that were inside of our media center, and that went over to this committee, which is actually called the Schools Material Review Committee to review, and they deemed that the books were not inappropriate and they were actually kept inside of our media centers. So the, uh, the policy that you mentioned is pretty comprehensive. It's 18 pages long. It was written in 2011, but then it was revised um, every couple of years at first. And then I noticed revisions every year since 2021. Um, I'm guessing to comport with new Florida laws that have come down the pike since then. So, so let's look at the very specific challenges because they are public record, anybody can see them. And, and I wanna go through them by putting them up first, uh, so on a graphic so people can see it. The first one is the hill we climb. So this, okay, let's, let's do then another one since we're looking at Love to Langston is the name of the book. This is kind of a poetry um, biography of poet Langston Hughes. And this was challenged by the same person uh, and now we're looking at the, the two different things. Let's go back to, yeah, let's go back to love for Langston. Okay, Roberto, I don't know if you can see what we're seeing, but we're seeing the actual um, petition. And there are questions on the petition, and I want to direct some people to look at, number one, it, the question is, to what do you object? And that is left blank on one of them. And here, on this one, it says, the objection is the page starts with CRT, Critical race theory is CRT, and more pages that have the same. And then on number seven is, what do you believe the, is the function of the material? And the petitioner said, indoctrination. And so I want to, let's start there, if you would. What do you make of this kind of petition with those specific objections? And oh, by the way, the, the parent admits that she has not actually seen professional reviews on the material. So, so let's start there. What do you make of this kind of petition using the words CRT and indoctrination, which frankly really wasn't part of the common lexicon before it became sort of partisan buzzwords in the past couple of sessions? 
Yeah, so Ben, I can't speak for the particular parent. Um, every parent has the right to submit their complaints with their views. Um, what I can assure the public is that there was nothing of indoctrination or CRT in any of these five textbooks um, that this parent had brought up. And it was reviewed by a, a committee of professionals um, that came back and provided their feedback on it um, and deemed it to be appropriate inside of our school libraries and media centers. So on the hill we climb, and if we can put up that um petition, the graphic of that petition again. On the hill we climb, it's the same parent um, who had also very similar objections, also did not fill out the first actual question, which is, why do you object to this material? There was just no answer to that. And then um, one of the questions is, if we can see it again, that would be amazing. Are you aware of the professional reviews on this material? And the parent said on this question, she answered, I don't need it. She didn't need the professional reviews. Uh, number seven is, what do you believe is the function of this material? And the parent wrote, cause confusion and indoctrinate students. So while it is uh, this woman and every single parent's right to object to anything, when you see these kind of objections, and then ultimately it goes through the process, are, are, you, are you concerned that this is being politicized? I'm concerned that the entire process has been politicized, Gianna. Um, even as we look in the media, that the continued narrative is that books have been banned. No books have been banned um, from our libraries. All these books are available. And, you know, I think parents are confused. And, you know, we need to be respectful to have a good dialogue amongst all of ourselves um, with people who think differently. And this individual might think differently. And what we do is we always assure our parents that everything's going to be reviewed by, a prof by professionals. And in this case, it was reviewed by professionals. And no one parent will ever have the ability to just remove a book from a school. And no books have been banned in Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Right. And that, that's been actually in the political rhetoric. That's been very damaging to have the word banned where a ban does not exist. There have been removals, no doubt. And, and there is a great debate over what's appropriate and what is not. So take us through how subjective or objective is the determination of what is appropriate, age appropriate, and what is not. So in this case, what was found was um, the committee of, uh, I think it was about seven members. Um, this was composed of teachers, media specialists, school counselors, as well as district administrators that review the content of the books. Um, this book in particular, if we look back at the book of um, the hill we climb um, is actually listed and we sent this message out to our parents um, inside of Tidal Wave by Follett, who's actually the publisher, to be characterized as a middle school grades book. And it's also like characterized the same way an accelerated reader. So that is why the, uh, the team that was uh, set to review this book in the committee decided that the book should be placed in that area. Very similar to when we go to Barnes and Noble or any of the local bookstores where books are put in categories. That's the, the only thing that was determined by this group. Um, there was no removal of that book suggested in any way. And is there a component on this book or any book, is, it, is there a component for other parents who may have very different views to object to having a book removed or moved and ask that it be reinstated? Well, absolutely. Any parent can bring back another concern. Um, in this case, the local PTA has sent letters of support for the entire process um, and have actually come forward and saying that they themselves have asked their children if they have the ability to go see the book. And all students in the book have the ability, even the students that are in elementary grade levels. Um, so it's not that the book is now only available to middle school students. This is a K through eight school, meaning that um, we have a mix of students there. But if a student is able to read at that level, um, they have the access to be able to gain access to these books and the teachers as well as the media specialists always assist them with having access to all the books inside of our media centers. All right, I want to take this a little bit broader. We have to take a quick break, sit tight for a few minutes, and we will be right back with Miami-Dade School Board member Roberto Alonzo next. <music> back with Miami-Dade School Board member Roberto Alonzo talking about the whole process of reviewing books and parent challenges that have become so much part of the political narrative, not only in Florida, but nationwide in the past year. Um, Roberto, have you seen an uptick in these kind of challenges? Actually, Glenna, no. This is the first challenge that we received, um, and it was reviewed through our committees. 
Um, but no, it's, there has not been an uptick on this. And the, the parent challenges are very different from the actual process that the school boards use, not only Miami-Dade, but all, use to vet textbooks originally before they go into classrooms, before they go into libraries. That, is that right? That is correct. Yes. Yeah, so um, this was an actual localized review. When a parent comes in with a complaint, it's dealt locally at the school level. Um, with the principal, and that's what our board policy instructs. Um, when we're looking at overall curriculum, yes, it starts off at the state where the Department of Education will review it, and then it's given to the school board where we then have the guidelines on the books and which will be used within our schools. So in the past two legislative sessions, the education, some of the education laws, because there's been a lot, have um, that have addressed guardrails and guidelines for certain types of education really revolve around sex education, uh, education as related to gender and gender, gender identity, and also history, particularly how to teach the history of race in America. And those are now codified in law in Florida for uh, just the past two sessions. How, you know, we've talked about that on this program and, and on the news so much, and there is a perception and there is fact and I wonder if you would go over, because you've seen a lot of that sitting on the dais of the Miami-Dade County School Board. Take us through how you deal with the perception that some of these lessons are going to either, um, the words I've heard are erase or ignore or discriminate against people in public school who may be affected. Well, Glenna, as you know, we're probably one of the most diverse communities in this country. Um, in Miami-Dade County, we serve, you know, hundreds of different nationalities and languages, um, and no history is being erased. We are still teaching history um, within us, inside of all of our schools, um, and it's never been erased, and it's something that we're not going to erase. We're all very proud of our heritage, and it's something that, as a school board, that is very diverse right now at this point moment as well. Um, we represent all the different communities within here, and we're going to continue to always represent them and teach the history that's uh, that's behind it. There is in Florida state law and also in the school districts, there are mandates to teach history. There is African American history, Holocaust history, um, but the way that's taught and the specific acronym CRT, which which this parent who used on the petition forms used that acronym. What is, in the definition of the school board, how do you define CRT, which actually is a college level theory course? How do you define that in Miami-Dade schools? And, and where do you see that for, as an example? I know that's kind of a big, broad question, but as an example, help us understand when a parent challenges a book on CRT, what does that mean to the district and what would that look like? So Glenna, to start off with, there is no CRT within our school system. Like you said, that's been something that's been in higher education and more of a discussion there. Um, I can assure parents that um, the history we're teaching is the accurate history of what has occurred in American history, um, as well as world history. Um, so a lot of the times what we look at is the educational value and the historical significance that the, the content has. Um, we never go into any of those divisive languages or issues. Um, and for anybody who watches our meetings, they'll, they'll watch that the majority of our board meetings are really focused on the children and not following what's going on in the local media or nationwide politics. You know what I learned from that 18 pages of policy on looking at books? I don't think I knew, and maybe a lot of people don't, that challenges come from not only parents, but legitimate challenges are taken from a resident of Miami-Dade County. I'm not quite sure if Broward might have that same rule. I guess I'm presuming that, that it probably does. But why would a resident of Miami-Dade County with no child in school, public school or private school, why would that person be given jurisdiction to challenge what is in schools? Well, Glenn, I think that's that, that proof of the transparency of the district. Um, the district is here to serve our entire community as a whole. And even though you might not have a child inside of our school system, you still are a tax paying resident in Miami-Dade County. And your voice is always heard within our district. So our district is representative of our entire community. Um, and we're always gonna listen. But once again, it's always gonna go back to the professionals and policies have been in place so that the professionals will be the ones making the final determination on what it is that is being reported and if something could be changed in our schools. Um, not, not, no one single voice will ever have the ability to remove or challenge anything within our district. It will always be reviewed by the professionals. How do you think this became so partisan? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think uh, we've always had partisan issues throughout our country. If you look back in history, um, it's what really makes us as diverse as we are. Many of us who have come to this country, my parents, for example, came from a country in which they did not have a voice. This country allows everybody to have a voice, to be able to share their opinions, and to go into a, a good, respectful dialogue. And I think that's what we have to continue to do and what we have to show our children. Because at the end of the day, our children are watching us every day. And we have to be able to have constructive dialogue that is respectful of everybody's opinion, even though we might not agree with each other at points. We are all about respectful dialogue here. Roberto Alonso, great to see you. Have a beautiful Memorial Day, and we certainly do appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.